Welcome to another special Hornbill TV explainer, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alan Lee. After a long, suspenseful wait, relentless uh, days punctuated by brutal bombardment of Gaza, the Israeli forces are already on the move, ladies and gentlemen, and they are bringing in hell with them just for the Hamas. The Israeli military has entered northern Gaza. It has already started, apparently. The Middle East will never be the same again after the Palestinian militants attacked Israel and innocent people. On October 7th, the Hamas launched coordinated attacks from the Gaza Strip onto the bordering areas of Israel. These terrorists had to choose a Sabbath day and a date of several Jewish holidays to attack. The terrorists killed more than 1,400 people in Israel. Civilians and militants in Gaza alike are now paying a heavy, heavy price for attacking Israel. According to the Hamas-run health ministry in Gaza, approximately 6,747 people have been killed in Israel's bombardment of the Palestinian territory. Some estimates number the death toll to about 7,000 killed in Israel's retaliation for the Hamas-led attacks, ladies and gentlemen. This number could be fewer or more. For instance, the Times of India has reported that the Palestinian death toll has already passed 7,300 people killed. However, considering the magnitude and the ruthlessness of Israel's retaliation, the number could be on the higher side. The bombardments continue. Civilians and militants alike are being bombarded res uh, relentlessly by the Israeli forces. Gaza has been virtually flattened. Israeli airstrikes have destroyed numerous infrastructure in the Gaza Strip overnight. The Civil Defense Service in the Hamas-controlled Palestinian territory said on Saturday that hundreds of buildings and houses were completely destroyed and thousands of other homes damaged. Uh, Mahmoud Bazal, a spokesperson for the Gaza Civil Defense, said that the intense bombardments have changed the landscape of northern Gaza. But it doesn't look like Israel wants to relax its faith, ladies and gentlemen, at least not just yet. The speculations about a full-on ground invasion of Gaza might now be a reality. The Israeli forces are already said to have entered northern Gaza. On Friday, the media reported that the Israeli forces had knocked out communications and created a near blackout of information by striking targets in the Gaza Strip with intensified bombardment and artillery fire overnight and into Saturday. Israel confirmed on Saturday morning that its troops deployed the previous night remain present on the ground. It intensified bombardment of the Gaza Strip, knocking out internet and communication services in the besieged territory. This has isolated Gaza's approximately 2.3 million residents from both internal and external communication, ladies and gentlemen. The media reported that explosions from continuous airstrikes lit up the sky over Gaza City for hours after nightfall on Friday. The Israeli military said it was expanding ground operations into the territory. This signaled a move closer to an all-out invasion, invasion of Gaza, which is meant to crush the ruling Hamas militant group. The Israeli military said on Saturday it has already entered northern Gaza overnight, and this report seemed to be consistent across the media houses uh, in India and also abroad, ladies and gentlemen. It has, that is the Israeli military forces, it has expanded military operations in the besieged Palestinian enclave as it steps up its assault on the Hamas. A uh, military spokesperson said Israeli forces were still in the field, though, of course, they didn't offer much information or what that actually meant. But then you can't give away military plans to the media just like that, ladies and gentlemen. The spokesperson added that Israel would allow trucks carrying food, water and medicine to enter Gaza on Saturday. This might offer some respite to civilians there, especially in the areas that the Israeli forces have entered. That would mean that the area that the Israeli forces occupy have been cleared of militants and relief work can be undertaken in that regard. 
The BBC also carried a video of what appears to show Israeli ground forces already in Gaza. Ladies and gentlemen, the BBC said that the video was released by the Israel Defense Forces. It appears to show dozens of Israeli tanks and military vehicles in Gaza. Israel's military said it is expanding its ground operations. It also said that approximately 100 fighter jets were used to bombard the Gaza Strip. Uh, the news house reported that the IDF did not specify where exactly in Gaza the footage was filmed and that the media house has not been able to independently verify the location of the video. Israel has never been a pushover. This small country surrounded by enemies has a long list of operations from secret assassinations to not so secret wars that involve directly attacking countries in the Middle East, ladies and gentlemen. It has always been known to hunt down its enemies, war or no war. Some of the most famous ones include the Operation Wrath of God. Some of you might be knowing Operation Wrath of God was a covered operation directed by the Israeli Secret Services Mossad. This involved the assassination of individuals accused of being involved in the 1972 Munich massacre. In September 1972, 11 uh, Israeli athletes were killed by Palestinian militants at the Munich Olympics, ladies and gentlemen. In an operation that lasted approximately 20 years, the Mossad eliminated members of the Palestinian armed militant group Black September and operatives of the Palestinian Liberation Organization uh, accused of being involved in the Munich Olympics massacre. Uh, have you watched Munich, the 2005 historical drama film produced and directed by Steven Spielberg? It starred Eric Bana and Daniel Gray. Well, that movie was based on the 1984 book Vengeance by George Jonas, which was an account of the Mossad assassinations following the Munich massacre. Uh, more about the vengeance Israel has sought. Uh, there is a destruction of the Ugandan Air Force during Operation Entebbe. This operation was launched in response to the Palestinian-led hijacking of an international civilian passenger flight between Tel Aviv and Paris. The aircraft was hijacked by two Palestinian terrorists and two German RZ terrorists. These terrorists diverted the flight to Libya and then went to Uganda where they landed at Entebbe International Airport to be joined by other terrorists there. The Israeli forces went in to rescue hostages and they bombed the country's air force there. All the seven militants were killed and 11 MiG fighters supplied to Uganda by Soviet Union were also destroyed. Uh, by the way, this operation was led by Israeli military commander Yonatan Netanyahu, brother of someone we know today as Benjamin Netanyahu, the Prime Minister of Israel, ladies and gentlemen. Further, uh, more about Israel's uh, adventures in the Middle East. Israel has attacked and destroyed Iraq's uh, nuclear, uh, nuclear plant. It sabotaged Iran's nuclear activities too. It has also destroyed Syria's nuclear reactor. Israel has even hunted down Nazi war criminals who were responsible for the death of Jews during the Second World War. Again, Israel has also assassinated military officials and nuclear scientists from rock states. It has often eliminated terrorist leaders including the founder of Islamic Jihad and of course leaders of Hamas and the PLO. Anyone any organizations that made the mistake of stepping on Israel's toes found out the hard way. The list of covered and not so covered operations Israel has conduct, uh, conducted, uh, not to mention wars against its neighbors, are many. You can check them out on the internet. Israel is a country you don't mess with. Thank you for watching Hornbill TV. I'm Al Guli. See you next time.